Thank you. Thank you, everybody. And here's our bartender, Angel. <laughs> thank you, thank you. God bless you, everybody. God bless you, Angel. Well, this is a good one, Angel. Let's get into it. I'm ready. Okay. Here we go. This is the 105th, 105, the 105th of our doctrines of this series. And it's called, Come Now, Let's Leave. Come Now, Let's Leave. Subtitle is Onward, Wednesday Evening. Okay, we're Wednesday evening. This is like Thursday for the Jewish uh, time. That they, as you know, if you've been following along, that at sunset is when they... Uh, their time changes to the next day. John continues to write the final discourse of Jesus, of his chosen disciples. This, as they travel now towards the Mount of Olives, it is best to just take John's words now, if we can, uh, as he records them, because nothing else describes better what Jesus is passing on even to us. However, it means a lot of scripture. <laughs> it means a lot of scripture that we have to read here. So please hang on and, and stay with me, okay? I pray that these last teachings of Jesus, as they walk along to the Mount of Olives, will have as much meaning for all of you as they always have for me. First, we see Jesus portraying himself as the true vine, the true vine and the Father as the gardener. And that's in today's New International Version, John 15, 1. It says, I am the true vine, and my Father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit, he pr prunes, so that it may be even more fruitful. 13. You are already clean because of the words I have spoken to you for. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. 5. I am the vine. You are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. <laughs> Six, if you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire, and burned. Seven, if you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. Eight, this is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourself to be my disciples. <sighs> Looking at our relationship this way, we may see more clearly how it works. Haven't we watched trees in the springtime budding and, and starting their little leaves coming out on the branches? Yet some branches seem to do nothing. So we assume that they are dead branches that need to be cut off, thrown into the fire. <laughs> they are dead because for some reason they have lost the life-giving nourishment that, once, that they once en enjoyed from the tree of which they are just a branch. Next, Jesus is making it clear how important it is for us to have love for one another. So here we go. I told you a lot of scriptures. Today's New International Version, John 15, 9. It says, As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. 10. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. 11. And I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. Twelve. My command is this. Love each other as I have loved you. Thirteen. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friend. 
14. You are my friends. If you do what I command, 15, I no longer call you servants because servants do not know what the master's business is. Instead, I have called you friends for everything that I learned from my father, I have made known to you. 16, you did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. And so that whatever you ask in, in, in my name, the Father will give you. 17, this is my command. It's a commandment. <laughs> Love each other. <laughs> we could just stick one commandment up on the, on the wall. It says, Love each other. <laughs> Think of it. A servant doesn't know all of his boss's business, right? The servant does the work that is set out for him to do. And if he does it well, in most cases, he is rewarded for his loyal work. The servant is an employee in our thinking, and sometimes nowadays needs a union to keep his earnings in line with his living expenses. Jesus says that he doesn't call us servants anymore. He calls us friends. Now, as friends, we know his business. His friends know each other's business. They come to, hey, let me, oh, let me share something with you. You're my friend. And he laid down his life for us as friends. He says there's nothing better for you to do than to lay your life down for your friends. We see a lot of this in war. Maybe we really don't understand the true meaning of friendship or love. Maybe don't understand love or how to keep his command to love one another. It has nothing to do with Valentine's Day. <laughs> this is something so much more important. We need to learn what love means, what friendship means. To continue this final preparation Jesus is giving his disciples as they walk to the Mount of Olives, he prepares them for his persecution now. In the today's New International Version, John 15, 18, If the world hates you, keep in mind that it hated me first, Jesus said. 19, if you belong to the world, it would love you as its own. As it is, you do not belong to the world. But I have chosen you out of the world. That is why the world hates you. 20. Remember what I told you. Servants are not greater than their master. If they persecuted me, they will persecute you also. If they obeyed your, my teaching, they will be yours also. 21. They will treat you this way because of my name. For they do not know the one who sent me. Jesus says. 22, if I had not come and spoken to them, they would not be guilty of sin. But now they have no excuse for their sin. 23, those who hate me hate my father as well. 24, if I had not done among them the works no one else did, they would not be guilty of sin. As it is, they have seen and yet they have hated me and my father. 25. But this is to fulfill what is written in their law. They hated me without reason. 26. When the advocate comes who I will send to you from my father. We saw a lot of that last time. The spirit of truth who, who goes out from the father. He will testify about me. 27, and you also must testify, for you have been with me from the beginning, Jesus says. Now we go to John 16, 1. It says, all this I have told you so that you will not fall away. And so you won't fall away. So it's, we could. We could just start backsliding. Two, they will put you out of the synagogue. In fact, the hour is coming when those who, who kill you will think they are offering a, a service to God. Three, they will do such things because they have not known the Father or me. 
for. I have told you this so that when their hour comes, you will remember that I warned you about them. I did not tell you this from the beginning because I was with you. This reminds me that we must also know what the true meaning of sin, sin. We got to know what the true meaning of sin is. The meaning of sin is missing the mark. You're trying to shoot, mm, pow, oh, I missed the mark. Verses 15, 22 said, If I had not come and spoken to them, they would not be guilty of sin. But now they have no excuse for their sin. Okay? This seems to answer the question. If we don't have a mark to shoot at, do we have sin? He says they're not guilty of sin. Jesus says in verse 15, 9, you do not belong to the world. I have chosen you out of the world. So we Christians do have a mark to shoot at because we have seen and believed. And Jesus has taken us out of this world. And when we miss the mark, the Holy Spirit sets for us. It is called sin. The Holy Spirit teaches us and speaks in our heart and lives in us and gives, guides us. All we have to do is realize we have missed the mark, what we were aiming for. And we learn to do better by the Holy Spirit teaching us. We confess, I missed the mark again. Oh God, forgive me. And God is faithful. He forgives us. But we learn from this. Jesus tries to express the necessity of his going away now. Today's New International Version, John 16, 5, says, but now I am going to him who sent me. None of you ask me, where are you going? Six, rather you are filled with grief because I have said these things. Seven, but very truly I tell you, it is for your good that I am going away. Unless I go away, the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. Now we see here that Jesus calls the Comforter, he calls the Holy Spirit him. So the Holy Spirit is a person just like Jesus and the Father. Three and one. Eight. When he comes, he will prove the world to be in the wrong about sin. He'll prove that it's wrong about sin the world is. And righteousness and judgment. It's wrong. The world is wrong about all that stuff. Nine, about sin, because people do not believe in me, Jesus said. Ten, about righteousness, because I'm going to the Father, where you can see me no longer. Eleven, and about judgment, because the prince of this world now stands condemned. That's the Holy Spirit is proving to us that the world is wrong about sin, righteousness, and judgment. We have God living in us, giving directions as to where we are wrong. And still it seems to me that the majority of us are not paying any attention. We continue to think, feel, and take actions to suit our own appetites. And God doesn't get any glory. Jesus says that sin is not believing in him. What is sin? sin what, what, how do we miss the mark? We don't believe in him. We may say we do, but a lot of people don't believe in him. If we do believe in him, then he takes sin away. Righteousness is being in Jesus as he is in the Father. So we can do his work here on earth. Judgment is the condemnation of Satan. And those who follow the prince of this world, Satan, even not knowing it. This is the reason there is no room for judgment to be acted out by Christians. We judge falsely to satisfy our own pleasures. According to scripture later in the kingdom, we will be judging the twelve tribes of Israel. But we are not to judge anyone at this time. God is king. And the only one who knows who is to be judged and who is not to be judged. 
Jesus tells more about the Holy Spirit who is coming. Today's New International Virgin, John 16, 12. I have much more to say to you, more than you can bear now. 13. But when he, the Spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears, and he will tell you what is yet to come. The Holy Spirit's going to give us all of this. He's already giving it to us. 14. He will glorify me because it is from me that he will receive what he will make known to you. 15. All that belongs to the Father is mine. That is why I said the Spirit will receive from me what he will make known to you. So there's a connection, the Holy Spirit, Jesus, the Father. The disciples, of course, are very confused by all of this. <laughs> are you? Today's New International Version, John 16, 16. Jesus went on to say, In a little while you will see me no more. And then, after a little while, you will see me. 17. At this, some of the disciples said to one another, What does he mean by saying, In a little while you will see me no more, and then after a little while you will see me again? And because I am going to the Father, 18, they kept asking, What does he mean by a, a little while? We don't understand what he is saying. Jesus ensures them that their grief would turn to joy. So you're going to grieve you now, but you're gonna, it's going to turn to joy. Today's New International Version, John 16, 19. It says, Jesus saw that they wanted to ask him about this. So he said to them, Are you asking one another what I meant when I said in a little while you will see me no more, and after a little while you will see me? <laughs> Duh, yes. 20. Very truly, I tell you, Jesus says, you will weep and mourn while the world rejoices. You will grieve, but your grief will turn to joy. 21. A woman giving birth to a child has pain because her time has come. But when her baby is born, she forgets the anguish because of her joy that a child is born into the world. 22. So with you, now is your time of grief, but I will see you again, and you will rejoice, and no one will take away your joy. 23. In that day you will no longer ask me anything. Very truly, I tell you, my Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. Again, he says this. 24. Until now, you have asked, you have, you have not asked for anything in my name. Ask, and you will receive, and your joy will be complete. Jesus tells them that a oh, time is coming now when he can speak more clearly to them. And that's in today's New International Version. I told you a lot of scriptures. Ugh, a little coffee here, yes, please. Yes, it's coffee mm. time. Mm. That hits the spot, Angel. Thank you. I hope so, Pastor <laughs> Jay. Thank, Thank you. you. Are you writing all this down, Angel? Yes, I got it. A lot of scriptures, right? Oh, but this yeah. is all happening while they're walking on their way to the Mount of Olives. important time. Where Jesus is going to be uh, arrested and crucified. Here we go. Today's New International Version, John 16, 25. It says, Though I have been speaking figuratively, Jesus says. A time is coming when I will no longer use this kind of language, but will tell you plainly about my Father. 26. In that day you will ask in my name. I am not saying that I will ask the Father on your behalf. No, the Father himself loves you because you have loved me and have believed that I have come from God. 28. I came from the Father and entered the world. Now I'm leaving the world and going back to the Father. Disciples express now that they believe what he is saying. They're saying, 
I can believe that. Today's New International Version, John 16, 29. Then Jesus' disciples said, Now you are speaking clearly and without figures of speech. 30. Now we can see that you know all things and that you do not even need to have anyone ask you questions. This makes us believe that you came from God. You think they would by now. 31. Do you now believe? Jesus replied. 32. A time is coming, in fact, has come when you will be scattered, each to your own home. You will leave me all alone, yet I am not alone, for my Father is with me. 33. I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome this world. For sure. The comfort in all of this is that Jesus has overcome this world we struggle with every day. We just have to wait to be with him and live with him in his kingdom. The waiting we deal with now is called working out our salvation. So that's our scriptures now. Next time, we're going to see something very special. We always talk about the Lord's Prayer, but the Lord's Prayer isn't really the Lord's Prayer. It was what he was teaching the disciples, how they should pray when they were asking, well, how should we pray? <clears throat> that's what the Lord was teaching them. And we call it the Lord's Prayer. We quite often recite it when maybe we should or maybe we shouldn't. Maybe it's not something that's really coming from our hearts. But what we're going to see next time is Jesus is going to teach. No, he's not going to teach. He's going to actually pray to the Father for himself and for his disciples. And he's going to, amazingly going to pray for us, everyone who follows his disciples. It's exciting next week. Okay? All righty. It's been good to see you again. God bless you. These things I have spoken unto you, that in me you shall have peace. In the world shall have tribulation. Be a good cheer, be a good cheer, for I have overcome the world. See you next time. Now I live in all your promises, and nothing seems worthwhile. Except to be in your kingdom of love, my Lord.